Look at this list. Tremble in fear of this list. This is peak Yu-Gi-Oh deck building. This is Mannequin Cat Splite. What's up, kids? It's me, Emperor Stove, and I'm here with a report on the July 2022 Chalice Line Monthly. This past weekend, I played in the monthly tournament hosted by Mr. MBT Yu-Gi-Oh, and yep, this is really what I played. <laughs> Now, if you're a sane, rational person, you're probably looking at this list and thinking, what the hell is this? Well, let me give you some context. <laughs> if you watch my streams, you're probably familiar with this deck that I like to play called Mannequin Cat Control. And if you don't watch my streams, you should check me out at twitch.tv slash Emperor Stove. I'd really appreciate it. Number 29, Mannequin Cat, is a generic rank 2 with two effects. Once per turn, you can detach material from it, target a monster in your opponent's graveyard, and summon it to your opponent's field. But the important one is when a monster is special summoned to your opponent's field, you can target a face-up monster your opponent controls and summon any monster with the same type or attribute from your hand, deck, or graveyard. So this deck is essentially Mannequin Cat Turbo with a bunch of different engines that allow you to summon Mannequin Cat, as well as a bunch of monsters of varying types and attributes that you can summon off of Mannequin Cat during your opponent's turn to either be floodgates or interruptions. Well, this is the next evolution, Mannequin Cat Sprite. Now, this is a sprite deck first and foremost that has Mannequin Cat in it, but Mannequin Cat is an easy add to the end board, given that it's a rank 2, and it provides a flexible interruption, which is kind of nice. So here's the breakdown of the deck. We've got 13 Mannequin Cat targets, Machina Citadel, Cosmo Dark Destroyer, Archlord Christia, Amorphage Goliath, Dino Wrestler Pankertops, The End of Anubis, Scary Moth, Thunder King Ryo, Fairy Tail Snow, Fallen of Albaz, Barrier Statue of the Inferno, Token Collector, and Testudo Eret Newman. We've got a nice variety of types and attributes, so we have something to summon against pretty much any matchup. Next, the sprite cards. We're on three jet, three red, three blue, two carrot, three starter, and one smashers. This is a little bit more sprites than most play. I think most of them are on like either one red, one carrot, or two red, one carrot. But given that this is a 60-card deck, I want to draw more extenders if I can. Now for the rank two enablers, we're on two kiss a kill, one frost, two Leela, one treat, two secret password, and three sunny snitch. This is obviously just a live twin engine to get to a rank 2. I'm not playing any live twin uh, link monsters in the extra deck. Also, three Nimble Beaver and three Deep Sea Diva. You want to see just one of these rank 2 starters in your opening hand, so we're playing basically all of the good ones. Then the, the Frogs, we got three Swap, one Ronin, one Dupe. Uh, and then for the regular normal cards, we're playing one Called By, three Ash, three Dark Ruler, and three Judgment. Judgment was a pick that I chose because I was afraid of people metagaming for Sprite in this tournament uh, and maining stuff like Dark Ruler or Droplet. And this was a way to kind of beat those cards, and it actually went pretty well. Uh, I was surprised at how well this card performed. For the extra, we're on four targets for our Fallen of Albaz that we can summon on our opponent's turn with Mannequin Cat, Mirror Jade, Drago Stapelia, Albalanidus, and Sprind. And for the rest of our extra, we're on two Gigantic, one Mannequin Cat, one Toad, one Downer, one Zeus, one IP, two Elf, one Unicorn, and one Trouble Sunny. The side deck, we're on the Big Lesbian, two Ghost Ogre, three Didi Crow, three Ultimate Slayer, two Lightning Storm, one Harpy's Feather Duster, and three Impermanence. One nice thing about playing this deck in a best of three is that in games two and three, once you know what you're playing against, you can side out a bunch of the irrelevant Mannequin Cat targets and side in good cards. With that said, let's check out some of the games. Round one, we got a buy, so we're going to start with round two, where we're up against Math Mech. Uh, we did win the die roll, so we get to go first. This hand is a little bit rough because it doesn't contain any of the actual sprite engine, but because this version of the deck has a way to put a rank two on the board that doesn't require swap, that's still an interaction on the opponent's turn, we're going to go a different route than maybe usually you would see. Like, this would usually just be double toed. But instead of getting the swap off of the Gigantic, we're going to get blue instead just to get a bunch of more extenders because we have more plays we can make. We're going to go elf to bring back this jet, and this gives us four material on board, which allows us to go IP Mannequin Cat. And we have double judgment, and we have a red engrave to summon during our opponent's turn off of the elf to get another monster negate. Our opponent's going to start by summoning Sigma, which is a great target for Mannequin Cat because it's light, meaning we could try to go for an Archlord Christia. Unfortunately, they have a Ghost Bell to negate it because Mannequin Cat can summon from the graveyard, which is hilarious. We're going to bring back the red now to get a Monster Negate on board. They go for Circular and they go for Alumbertion. I don't really know exactly where I'm supposed to interrupt this deck because I don't really know how it plays, 
but I see this card and see that it adds a card and that they put two cards in it into it, and I assume that judgmenting this is probably pretty good. It turns out I was correct, and they don't have anything else to do uh, from here. They set the Super Factorial, but we can just shuffle that back with Unicorn. Now, here's where you can kind of use Mannequin Cat to help break boards. You can bring back a monster on their field and then summon anything from the deck, including this big asshole, Cosmo Dark Destroyer, because it's a dark, just like Lingaribo. We pop the Lingaribo, and the opponent sees that we have lethal and concedes. Game two, we're going second here, and while we've drawn a bunch of our going second cards, our opponent has unfortunately bricked, which means that all of these cards are kind of going to rot in our hand, and we don't really have any engine. We do draw into the Sunny Snitch, which does get us going theoretically. We go Leela into Kiss-A-Kill, and they, we make a Gigantic, but unfortunately they have a D barrier to prevent us from going any further. So we have to just go to battle and attack. We do still have the monster negate off of the red and the double DD Crow, but I don't really know how good DD Crow is in this matchup. Our opponent doesn't draw anything again, just an imperm, so they still don't have any plays, but they do have another D barrier to prevent us again from going anywhere. We drew Smashers, which doesn't really do us any good, because it's not even live. And then our opponent finally draws the Synap Mining, and that gets them the circular, and now they're off to the races. We try to red negate the circular, but they have the imperm for the red which means we pretty much are out of stuff. We have to hope that these two DD Crows get us there, but I really have no idea when I'm supposed to DD Crow this deck, and I don't even know if it really matters because they have so many ways to get um, stuff back out of the graveyard. They go for Alan Bershon, they get the Super Factorial, or I think they actually got the Equation there. Uh, and we try to DD Crow to stop the Equation, but it doesn't matter. They have Splash Mage, and this is the easiest update access code of their life. And we see the writing on the wall, and we have to just surrender. Luckily, we get to go first game three, and our hand is absolutely insane. This is basically the ideal opener. A rank two maker plus either blue, jet, or starter. Because all of that is a uh, pretty much full combo. We get to go jet, blue, blue, get red, which means we have this red here to insulate ourselves from any uh, hand traps our opponent might have. Of course, our opponent doesn't have any, so it doesn't really matter. But, you know, if they did, it would be really nice. Uh, we get the, the uh, Swap Frog engine going, which is going to let us go for Toad. And this is the end board that this version of the deck is trying to make. Elf plus Toad plus Mannequin Cat plus Red plus Ratio plus your White. Also, we drew Judgment, which is pretty sick. Uh, we are prepared for just about anything our opponent could do. Of course, our opponent's hand is a brick. They don't have any plays anyway, so it doesn't really matter. They go droplet sending their entire hand for a comedy joke. We judgment negate it because it's also a comedy joke. And we have the easiest lethal in the universe because our opponent doesn't have anything to do and they have conceded. Round three, we're up against Live Twin Sprite, and while we've both opened insane game one, unfortunately our opponent won the die roll, so they're going to go first. We have absolutely no interaction from our hand on this opponent's turn, so they're going to get to do anything and everything they want. They're going to go gigantic to get blue, blue get jet, or sorry, I think they get red because they've already summoned jet. Uh, they also have starter in hand, which means they can go even further than this after they go for the evil twin line. Leela, kiss a kill, they get to draw a card, and of course they draw a hand trap, another interaction. Starter for Carrot, they have like six interactions here. Our hand is pretty crazy at playing through stuff, but I don't think we can play through this much. We're going to try, certainly. They, uh, they negate the Sunny Snitch, which is good for us, because that kind of keeps our starter uh, from getting hit by the Carrot. They have a Veiler for our Live Twin. We're trying to get to some kind of rank 2 play. They're going to try to stop us by using the Leela to pop our level 2, but luckily we did draw the starter. Uh, we're going to try to get some more material, but of course they have an imperm for this too. I really was hoping to get that red negate out, uh, because that's the card that's going to stop me from being able to break this board. I'm trying to attack over the red and then try to use Mannequin Cat to break the board, but unfortunately they can just elf bring back the red, and when we try to Mannequin Cat, they just negate it. And that is all I have left, and I realize that I have lost the game. Game two, we get to go first, but our hand is pretty bad, unfortunately. We do not have any of our one-card rank twos, and we also don't have blue jet or starter to get a bunch of material on field. We're going to start by normal summoning Swap Frog, and our opponent is going to gamma the effect. Unfortunately, we have to Ash, because if our swap dies, we literally do not have a play. Luckily, though, because this is the Mannequin Cat version of the deck, we do have a play we can make without having to commit 
through the gamma. We also drew judgment. We're going to have to hope that this mannequin cat and this judgment and this crow get us through uh, our opponent's plays. They're going to start with kiss a kill for Leela, and I pretty much have to do this because this is the only chance I have to end their turn. We're going to go mannequin cat targeting the kiss a kill to summon Christia from the deck. Luckily, our opponent does not have a way to beat it and immediately concedes. <laughs> We're going second game three, and unfortunately, we didn't draw any hand traps or any going second board breakers, which means that they can do anything they want. All they needed is enough material to get gigantic, and they are off to the races. They get to go through Elf here to bring back Red to get a monster negate, and then they get to do the Live Twin line because they have the Live Twin extenders. Live Twin Leela into Kiss a Kill to draw a card, and of course they draw another hand trap off of it. They will start it for Carrot, which means they have a monster negate, a spell trap negate, an Imperm, a Veiler, a DD Crow, and the Live Twin pop if they need it. We're going to try to push through this. We summon the swap. We summon the jet to get starter. We bounce the swap to summon it again to give us a material for our Ronin Toten. But of course, that DD Crow is going to shoot that plan in the foot. We're going to try to starter, but they negate it with Carrot. Now, this is basically our last option. We try to go for Mannequin Cat to get something from the deck that maybe contests the board, but they have a Veiler to stop Mannequin Cat from resolving, which means... We have nothing left. Our opponent has all of the material they need to kill us. Uh, we don't need to watch the rest of this game. I just get killed, and that's it. Round four, we're up against heroes, and we lost the die roll again, so we're going second. Our opponent is doesn't have the greatest hand ever. They're actually going to start with the Vion instead of the Stratos, which is interesting. They go Stratos for Shadow Mist to get Polly. They really wanted to get to a DP, I guess, but they drew mass change, which is a huge problem for us. We're going to go uh, kiss a kill into Leela Treat and then special the jet to get uh, something from deck here. They're going to mass change the Vion, and I honestly make a huge mistake here. Uh, I go starter into red, which uh, the misplay I make here is I forget that red doesn't destroy the monster that it negates unless you tribute a link or rank, uh, or rank 2 monster. So the whole reason why I negate this effect is because I think it's going to get rid of the Dark Law, but obviously it doesn't, which means I am completely fucked. Uh, their DP is still not uh, fired it off, and I've locked myself into level 2, so I can't even do any Mannequin Cat plays, so I just have to wall up and pass. They go DP, they pop the starter, which I think is honestly best for me. We're going to Judgment the Stratos, because otherwise they're just going to pop all of my Judgments. They attack over a couple of my monsters, then pop my other judgment, and they did leave enough material for me to do something. So with a good draw, I might be able to do it, but Sunny Snitch is not a good draw, especially with Dark Law on the field. I try to go for Mannequin Cat. They instantly realize it's the best card on the field and have to pop it. We go Sunny Snitch to try to get Leela, but they snipe it, and I'm out of place. We do get to go first game two, but unfortunately our hand isn't very good. It doesn't have any of the sprite cards in it. So all we have is our Nimble Beaver. Now, we did draw the dupe frog, which is going to let us extend a little bit past where we normally would if we only had a rank 2 maker. Usually that's just double toad, but because we get to dump an extra material off of the swap, uh, actually we get to dump two because we pitched one from hand, we actually get to also end on an IP to go along with our toad. We also drew the judgment, so this board isn't too bad considering uh, how uh, little our hand contained. Unfortunately, our opponent has a lot of really good... Uh, going second stuff. So they start with Dark Ruler. We have to Judgment this. They go Vion. I try to negate the Toad, hoping that it kind of, like, stops them because it's their normal summon, but unfortunately, I forgot to play around Mass Change. They, of course, drew it, so they Mass Change the Vion. I bring back the Toad, which is completely pointless because Dark Law means that you can't even use Toad's effect. They go Triple Tactics, which also lets them take the Toad. I can't negate it. Then they go Fusion Destiny into DPE, which pretty much nullifies my IP, meaning I have literally nothing to stop them. I also paid half my life points, which means all they have to do is just go to battle phase and attack over my useless monsters. <laughs> they try to go to the battle phase, I try to chain IP for funsies, they pop. I don't know why they pop the Dark Law, maybe just for BM, but it doesn't matter because I'm super dead. Round five, we're up against Exorcister, and we lost the die roll, which means we are going second once again. Our opponent is going to go Pax for Martha. Martha's going to get Elise, and then they're going to go for a Michaelis. 
They're going to get the Vadis from the deck, and then they're going to summon even more Exorcist Sisters. Uh, this is going to be a huge problem, especially with this hand. This hand is not particularly great. We have a Dark Ruler, but unfortunately, I feel like we kind of have to hold it because of the Vadis. We're going to go Diva. They have an Imperm for it. We're going to try to Gigantic, but they have Returnia to banish it, and I'm literally out of plays, and I know I can't possibly win from here. Game two, we're going first, and this is full combo. We're going to go Diva, try to get a Diva. They're going to Ash the Diva, but honestly, that doesn't do a whole lot. We're going to get to go Jet here to get Starter. Starter, get Blue, Blue, get Red. Our Red is going to let us insulate ourselves against any other hand traps as we go for our Gigantic play. This is almost full combo. Uh, we don't end up with the Red Negate on field because they denied us one material, but that's fine. We're still going to get to end on Toad plus Mannequin Cat, which is pretty insane against extra sister since it lets us get uh, a christia if they summon any light monsters now our opponent does have a dark ruler but they don't have any play unfortunately for them so they decide that they don't even want to try game three we're going second and we didn't draw any board breakers but we did draw one ash that ash is going to have to carry us they're going to go into a michaelis they are going to try to search i decide to ash this now i considered holding the ash letting them search like a Vadis here and ashing the Vadis on my turn just to try to prevent them from getting uh, extra sisters on board. But I decide to ash it here because it does prevent them from getting to Vadis if they don't have it already. And even if they do have it, it also maybe prevents them from getting a Returnia, which is also a big problem for me. Of course, it doesn't matter because they hard drew both cards anyway. <laughs> so I don't know how much this would have mattered. They set two and pass. We're going to try to do the live twin line. Uh, they're going to go Vadis here, which essentially locks down our graveyard because we don't want to let them summon anything uh, on us. I figure my only way out of this is to just make Zeus here. So we're going to overlay for the Gigantic. They're going to return it to banish it, which is correct because if, my gigantic res if they let my Gigantic uh, effect start resolving, even if it doesn't summon, it still locks both of us out of non- uh, level rank link twos, which means they can't summon extra sisters because gigantic is a fair card. But I do think they maybe made a bit of a mistake here going for Caspitel instead of another Michaelis to get a banish. Um, locking down the graveyard is good, but I didn't really plan on summoning from grave anyway, and this doesn't really prevent me from uh, presenting a threat to the board. So we're going to summon the Jet, we're going to summon the Red, we can't starter because we don't want to lock ourselves out of Zeus. I was never activating Gigantic anyway, because otherwise that would be uh, locking me out of the Zeus. We have to make the Elf so we can make the Gigantic big enough to attack over something, and then we make the Zeus in main phase two. I don't feel great about Zeusing for one card, but I just feel like I have to prevent them from getting more cards. I don't want them searching off the Caspatel, and I super don't want them to make a, to make a Magnifica somehow. We set the starter, which is going to let us do something maybe in the end phase here. They do not draw a play, which is great for us. They set the D barrier. We're summoning blue. I'm going to use blue to get carrot because I want to make sure that whatever that set card is, I can either force it or negate it here. We're going to start by summoning the carrot. They flip the D barrier. I don't need. I don't really need to negate that because it doesn't stop me. I special summon the red, and this is enough damage for lethal. Round six, we're up against Adventure Phantom Knight, and we once again lost the die roll, which means we're going second. Our opponent has the Brave Engine, and this turn ends up taking a long time, and I'm not going to make you watch it because I do not have any interaction to stop it. This is the board they ended on. They have a 3-mat Appaloosa, a Wandering Griffin Rider, a Set Fogblade, and a Valor in hand. I decide that there's no point in trying to play through this board, so I decide to conceal information and just concede. Game two, we're going first, and our hand is not particularly good because we once again didn't draw any of the sprite engine. We're going to go live twin into gigantic, and we're going to summon the blue here from deck instead of the swap. We just want more material to make a maybe slightly more diverse end board than just double toad. We get to go blue, jet, starter, red. Elves can bring back something here, so we get to end on a mannequin cap plus a red negate plus a judgment, so... This could definitely make it, especially since Mannequin Cat has a lot of good targets to summon against this deck in particular. We have to Judgment the Lightning Storm, but the big problem with this deck is that it does really poorly, or at least Mannequin Cat portion, against exactly the Adventurer Engine. Because anything that we could summon is essentially invalidated by the fact that they can just Draco back bounce it. 
So we have to summon the token collector to just stop uh, to just stop them from getting more stuff off of the brave engine and hope that they don't have anything else to do. But of course they do. They have the they have the extender to go into Cherubini. I make a mistake here by going elf to summon blue because I forget that I could uh, bring back a red after they run it over in battle. Uh, I don't think it really ends up mattering all that much, but. Theoretically, it would have been better to hold it. They go for a Zeus, which wipes our entire board. We don't have any way to stop it. They get a Fog Blade, and they get a right for next turn. So I have to contend through with Fog Blade and Zeus, and that is a completely awful draw. We try to go Dark Ruler Albaz to make a Mirror Jade, but of course they have the Fog Blade for it, and I don't have any way to stop this. They Zeus to get rid of my Elbaz, and all they have to do is put a monster on the board with 400 attack points. We try to token collector the right of Armas here, but they drew a bell for it. So they summon the Griffin Rider, I go to battle, and that's lethal. So that was my July 2022 CSM. Honestly, I'm shocked I won even two matches with this deck. Uh, I was not thinking I was going to win any at all. Uh, my sole intention when playing this deck was just to resolve Mannequin Cat for as many funny targets as possible, and I think I achieved that goal. Uh, if you're looking for a deck to win games with, do not play this shit. It is bad. It's terrible. It's just awful. Um, but if you're looking for a deck to occasionally make your opponents go, what the fuck, when you summon a Christia on their turn, I, I guess this is the deck for you? Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.